Oh my goodness, look at her! Ah, oh, she's so cute! Oh my goodness, what is that? Oh. Oh, how's it going, everybody? Hoodlumut here, back with some more Steins Gate Zero. And uh, last time, we went to a dinner party, and there uh, we met Maho. Uh, this was, of course, after we had found out about uh, that people had learned how to use Kuritz's, uh technology, or at least her theory, to turn memories into AI. Like, what? <laughs> That's insane. Anyway, after the dinner party, uh, or I guess right before leaving the, the dinner party, uh, Dr. Leskinen came up and told Maho, hey, why don't you uh, show him Amadeus, because he knows Kuditz so well. Um, which we only knew Kuditz after she came to Japan, not before, so this is going to be weird. And uh, we left off with actually seeing Kuditz's face uh, right on a computer screen. And then we got a sick intro uh, that was probably, that I probably liked better than the first one. Uh, that was so cool. I like that it was fully animated and everything. It was like, it just looked so sick. Really liked that. Really, really liked that. So, Anyway, without further ado, let's just uh, jump right back into this, because I'm telling you, I'm, I'm still soaking everything in. I don't know what to think of anything right now. I'm just, I'm here for the trip, and uh, we're just trying to take it all in right now. All right, Mr. Okabe, try to relax. My voice is a bridge, guiding you down into the past. You're going down and down and down. And then you see a gentle colored light. I was dreaming. Daydreaming. I was aware that I was lying on a big sofa undergoing counseling. I tried my best to stay calm and imagine what the psychologist was telling me. Yo, he had to go to a psychologist, my guy. Oh my goodness. What color is the light? Red. Red. I see. The person you care about is standing in the light. Are they your family? No. Then... Your friend? Or perhaps a lover? Lover. No, not my lover. Not even my friend. Then what are they? She and I are... Memories came flooding back into my mind, like a geyser. I mean, yeah, kind I mean, not really, but kinda. I, yeah, I get what he's saying, though. I mean, you liked her, is what you should say. Uh, no. Could you come with me for a moment? What? Mayuri Shina is not needed. I don't think that's where she said that, but okay. Also, how was that cut it? Tell me. I know you used the time leap machine. Save Mayuri. Go to the Beta World Line. The world where Mayuri doesn't die. Not just for your sake, but for mine as well. Oh! Will you... remember me? No! Oh no! Am I... going to die? 
I don't want to die. <laughs> Mr. Okabe! I killed her! It was me! It was me! Listen to me. I'm going to pat you on the shoulders. When I do, you will be fully awake. Three, two, one, now! There was a loud sound. Then I felt an impact on my shoulders. Kuritz's suffering face disappeared instantly, and I could feel my consciousness awakening. Uh. I stood up off the sofa. I felt dizzy and almost fell over. Are you all right? Rest a minute. I'll bring you a towel right now. The psychologist left the room. I realized I was soaked in sweat. The air conditioner was working, so I could tell it wasn't from the heat. <laughs> it was the first time I'd tried hypnotherapy at a mental health clinic. Do they really have that? Is that real? I always thought that was just in the movies. Is that real? Is, that, is hypnotherapy a real thing? I might have to check out that little tip later. My body felt strangely heavy. When I got outside, it was night. It was almost December, and the wind was cold. Oh my goodness, look at her! Ah, oh, she's so cute! Oh, look at her scarf! Oh, she's so cute! Oh, I like it. She went from blue to pink. Ah, oh, that's super cute, dude. I like that. <laughs> I don't know why that just hit me. It just hit me a certain way. Ah. <laughs> uh. How was it, Okari? Mayuri Shina asked me gently. Mayuri was a high school student and my childhood friend. She'd come with me to counseling today. I told her I didn't need her to, but she'd left school early to come. All I ever did was make her worry. Around three months ago, my one obsession had been saving her. To me, she had always been someone I had to protect. And now, she was worried about me. Oh, oh, we got Amadeus on our phone now. What the heck? Uh, okay. I'll uh, skip that for now. Oh, Suzuha! Oh, she's stuck here. I forgot. Yeah, this is... Yeah, Beta World. Uh, Beta World line Suzuha. Okay. Got a sec, Uncle Okarin. Uh, oh, yeah, I forgot. I gotta pick one. Um, but I refuse. Okay. Uh... <laughs> uh... Sure, I guess. Like, I don't... Okay. <laughs> Look at his little arms. <laughs> oh, it's fun. Listen, what do you think I should do about mom and dad? What do you mean? I just can't see them getting together like this. Well, you're right. Uncle Okarin, is there anything you can do? What do you mean? Can't see them getting together like this? What's like this? I mean, aren't they fated to get together? Or else you would not be here? Isn't that... Kind of... I mean... Uh, whatever. You know there's nothing I can do to help with that. You're right. Yeah. It kind of hurts that you just gave up that easily. What? It doesn't seem to be your kind of thing, uncle. Jealous. <laughs> okay. Sure. It was only because of Mayuri's recommendation that I tried counseling. It's not that bad, they said. 
I told her a small lie to make her feel better. Actually, they'd told me I had suffered serious trauma. They'd stopped the hypnotherapy and given me a course of counseling and drugs. Now they wanted to wait to see the results. <sighs> That's why he's on... Okay, that's why he's on the pills. Man, that really screwed him up. Basically, they decided there was nothing to do but to treat my symptoms and wait for it to heal naturally. Yeah, just with time, right? I couldn't tell if what Maho had shown me yesterday was having an effect. I underwent treatment without telling the psychologist about the time machine, or the world lines, or most of the things that had happened. So maybe there was no way for them to make a proper diagnosis. In any event, I decided not to think too much about the results. Hey, Mayuri, you haven't eaten yet, right? Want to go get some food? I'll treat you. Oh, can we go to Akihabara then? Luca and Ferris say they haven't seen you in forever. And they want to meet up. Dude, did they, they, I think they like, uh, I think they west, westernized this because um, they're, they're not using uh, Chan or, 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 or whatever anymore. They're not using the suffixes. That's interesting. Akihibara, huh? The clinic was in walking distance of my house. Akihibara was much farther away. But even so, I couldn't turn down Mayuri's request. <laughs> Until the events of this summer, I'd gone there almost every day. In fact, I had practically lived there. Lately, I only went three times a week at the absolute most. And then only to go shopping on the way home from school. We went out into the plaza in front of the station. Just like in Ikebukuro, even though it was only a month until Christmas. There were barely any decorations. I was sure the whole place would be covered with them the minute it was December 1st. That's usually how it works. <laughs> Eventually, I was sure to see maids in Santa outfits. Maids in Santa outfits. Passing out flyers in Akihibara, huh? Akihibara could be really weird. <laughs> oh, it's Ferris and Luca. Oh my goodness, what is that? <laughs> Whoa! What is this cat outfit? Oh my goodness. Yo, what the flop, dude? <laughs> okay. And then Luca kind of has something that looks like... Honestly, it's kind of ambidextrous, which kind of, I guess, fits the character. That's funny. Wow. All right. <laughs> that, th that threw me off. That was funny. Meow? Kiyoma! Oh, they took the U out of Kiyoma! What the heck? Okabe! Mayuri! Faris and Luca must have been waiting. They ran over as soon as they saw us. I missed you, Nya. Faris Nyanyan jumped at me without the slightest hesitation. She was a maid, and Faris wasn't her real name. I knew her real name, but if I didn't call her Faris at all times, even when she wasn't working, she'd get mad at me. <laughs> she was wearing the same outfit she always wore. Her work clothes from her job at the maid cafe, May Queen... Uh, Nyan Nyan. I learned it was May Queen Nyan Nyan, not Nyan to the second power or whatever, so... <laughs> I'm gonna try to remember to call it Nyan Nyan from now on. 
Was May Queen going to switch to Santa outfits soon? S stop it! Everybody's looking at us! I tried to pull Forrest off me, but it wasn't working. Maybe I should just steal the cat ears off of her head. <laughs> Who cares, Nya? All that matters right meow is Forrest and Kyoma. I care! And stop calling me Kyoma! Meow? Why? Oh, dude, I, it, also it's weird too because she says meow now instead of nyan. Ah, it's gonna throw me off. I guess she still says nya sometimes, but like the meow's throwing me off like really bad. <laughs> There's a, they, they super westernized everything. I have consigned that name to my dark past. <laughs> okay, that's a little chinibio came out of him. Meow. Forrest looked upset, but I decided to ignore her. <laughs> Kiyoma Hawawin was part of a past I'd sealed away. I decided to pretend he never existed. Ah. He had meddled with the forbidden invention called the Time Machine, and as a result, the systems that ruled the world had punished him. He dashed the hopes of many, lost the life of someone he cared for, and his heart had suffered grievous wounds. He must never be awakened again. I didn't need him anymore. Then what should I call you, Nia? Well, Okabe or something. <laughs> I think Okarin's a cute name, don't you, Ferris? By the way, Ferris was what Mayuri calls Faris. She claimed it was easier to pronounce, or something like that. Well, if you say so, Mayushi. It still doesn't sound right, though. She looked unsatisfied, but she backed away. Lukako, it's been a while. Yes. Lukako smiled happily. He always looks as beautiful as a pretty girl. But he's a guy. <laughs> they still kept that joke. Oh, no. <laughs> He was a classmate of Mayuri's, and could often be seen helping at the Yanabayashi Shrine, where his family lived. I probably shouldn't call him Lukako. Just like I told Faris not to call me Kyoma. Oh. Oh, is, is it Luka? Did he call Luka Lukako this whole time because that was a Chinibyo name? I didn't know that! Dude, what is happening? I feel like my whole world's falling apart of what I understood. <laughs> Yo, what the heck? Okay. He had his own name. Luka Urishibara. Okay! I knew that they said Luka, but I thought Luka was the, 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 the nickname. I thought the full name was Lukako. Yo. What the heck? Okay. But calling Lukako Luka after all this time... That would be really embarrassing. It feels like a very long time. I sometimes go to the lab, but you haven't been there much, have you? N no, I haven't. I've been busy with school. I had to get ready for ATF, too. Even after that was done, I'd been busy with Maho and Dr. Leskinen, and then Amadeus. I hadn't had a chance to rest. But I avoided mentioning that to them. Oh, and I'm in a club now. You joined a club? What kind of club, Nya? UFOs? UMAs? Who do you guys think I am? I guess I hadn't told them then. Mayuri. I'm pretty sure I told her. As the two of them looked at me with wide eyes, 
I cracked a knowing smile and puffed out my chest. The tennis club. He plays tennis? Yo, what? <laughs> He's a tennis boy. Okay. What? The people around us all turned to stare at Faris and Luca. Well, why the tennis club, Nya? Okabe, have you ever played tennis? Of course not. <laughs> I may not look it, but I'm terrible at sports. I'm confident I'd lose to Mayuri at distance running. Then why, Meow? Well, it's a long story, but... The associate professor, who's my teacher at school, is the tennis club's advisor. And they asked me to join. That's not long at all, Nya. Well, I'm not done yet. That teacher's done a lot for me, so I decided to stop by. And? And it turns out I have a talent for tennis. Despite the fact that I'm a beginner, I beat every single one of them. Oh, okay. Sick. Well, amazing, huh? You really are amazing, Okabe. <laughs> if I'd known, I would have been a pro tennis player. You could win Wimbledon. I guess Wimbledon. I don't know anything about tennis. <laughs> <laughs> hmm? What's wrong, Faris? Do you have a headache? I'm not even sure where to begin. That's the most obvious ploy to get new members that I've ever heard, Nia. <laughs> don't say that. I had kind of noticed, but I'm trying to avoid thinking about it. But they're all really good people. So you've been busy practicing with your club then? Hmm? Oh, no. Actually, I barely go. Huh? Then just what are Mew doing? Matchmaking parties and stuff. What? what? Their shouts filled the whole street, and once again, people turned around to stare. <laughs> it's not that surprising, is it? I'm a normal college kid. Th that's true. I'm sorry. But... Luca was fidgeting like he wanted to say something. How can you go after other women when you've got your beautiful forest? It's unforgivable, Nya. <laughs> she's she's a little more uh, she's a little more uh, <laughs> forward in this one than I feel like she was in the other one. <laughs> I mean, she she definitely joked around in the other one, but she's a little more. Uh, uh, you know, like, she just, she just, just a little, uh, she seems like she likes us. It's funny. Don't get the wrong idea, okay? I'm not really interested in girls. In fact, I went along with the rest of the club, but there really wasn't any place for a wannabe normal like myself. <laughs> there was no way I could keep up with the conversations that the, well, normal normies had. <laughs> While the other men and women were having fun, I would just kind of sit there. A matchmaking party was a challenge far beyond my capabilities. Yeah, dude, you're an introvert. I feel you. I'm here for that, dude. Support group, right here. <laughs> I wasn't going to tell Faris and Luca that, though. Ah, that's so nice. Mayushi wants to go to a matchmaking party with Okarin, too. Aww. What? Mayuri wanted to do what? It, is she old enough to be interested in that sort of thing? I mean, she's like 16, right? So, probably. Cause... That's when everybody gets together and has a fun party, right? Aw, she's so pure. 
<laughs> She's still so innocent. <laughs> Evidently not. <laughs> Hmm. Well, it's not wrong. But the nuance is a little different, Nia. Yeah? We could hold it at the lab. Of course, Luca and Faris will come. Oh, and Daru, and Nei, and Suzu. Oh. Mayuri turned to me with a guilty look. Suzu, huh? Suzuha Amane, also known as John Titer, a time traveler from the year 2036, a true warrior who was still fighting even when I was trying my best to give up. I'd barely seen her since summer. I was avoiding her. Part of the reason I'd stopped going to the lab was that she spent all her time there now. Oh, okay, I didn't know we were on bad terms. I guess that makes sense, though. Until a month or so ago, just hearing Suzaha's name was enough to cause flashbacks, and it was all I could do to endure them. After three months, I could finally stand to hear her name. But I didn't think I could keep it together if I met her in person. Of course, it wasn't her fault, and I wasn't blaming her, so I didn't want her to blame me. She'd never come out and said it, but when she looked at me with that razor-sharp glint in her eyes, I felt something like guilt. Oh, man, this is so sad. Um, uh, everyone? Mayushi's been planning an operation with Daru. Oh, she still says it. She still says operation. We're the only ones, dude, that's like changed. It is so sad. Oh, it hurts me. An operation? It sounded like something the old me would have done. Yeah? What kind of operation, Nya? Um... Operation Make Suzu Smile. Huh? Why was Mayuri talking about this out of the blue? No. Maybe it wasn't out of the blue. She might have been thinking about it for a long time. So I decided to respond as cheerfully as I could. Tell me about it, Mayuri. Oh... Okay. Um, so Mayushi thinks that Suzu's normally kind of scary, but she's actually a really nice person. Sometimes when I'm in the lab, I'll start to fall asleep on the sofa, and when I wake up, there'll be a blanket over me. Aww. When I ask Suzu about it, she says she has no idea, but... Oh, I had a similar experience. My dad once asked me to go shopping for him, but I was having trouble on the way back because I had to carry so much. And then Amine came by, and without saying anything, she took some of the bags from me and carried them. Huh. I had no idea. She said that it wasn't a big deal, so I shouldn't tell anybody. Interesting. Oh, I guess I just did. <laughs> I see. Oh my goodness, okay. Yeah, the image from taking Suzaha's uh, ending in the first game, okay. In the Alpha World line. She was a cheerful girl who smiled at everyone, and who loved to go mountain biking. Oh, she looks so cool now! Aw, oh, dude, look at her sick bomber jacket now! Yo! Okay. But in this world line, 
she wasn't the type who smiled a lot. This was partially due to the way she'd grown up. I'd heard about it third-hand from Daru, but because of the universal conscription program that started after World War III broke out, she'd been forced to undergo military training ever since she was in middle school. And after that, she joined up with the anti-government forces and gotten caught in a terrible struggle. After that, he said, she'd never really smiled. Dang. So I want Suzu to really smile. I see. So what's your plan, Nia? A Christmas party. A Christmas party? We all spoke in unison. <laughs> it's almost Christmas, right? And Suzu says she's never been to a Christmas party. So Mayushi wants to give her one as a present. Oh, she's just so pure. She's so wholesome. I love her so much. Bodice and Luca nodded at almost the exact same time. I'm in, Nya. Yeah? Me too. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. Will you come too? Uh huh. M well. You don't want to. It's not that. It's just. I don't think Suzaha would really want me there. Do you? I was never going back to the past. I still couldn't forget the look on Suzaha's face when I told her that. It was an expression filled with anger and despair. She must have felt like her last, most desperate hope was crumbling away right in front of her eyes. The words she'd said to me, then, were still sharp thorns lodged in my heart. Suzaha doesn't like me, you know. Mayushi doesn't think so. I think she probably regrets the fact that she got mad at you. Oh. I think she just can't say it. Really? Yeah, I'm sure of it. I couldn't turn her down after Mayeti said that. Fine, I'll think about it. Okay. Um, by the way, Okabe? There was a bit of hesitation in Luca's voice. How did the doctor's appointment go? Evidently, Luca had heard about my counseling from Mayuri. Maybe he'd wanted to see me because he was worried about how it went. I guess I'm making Lukaku and Fadis worry, too. In this world line, they hadn't joined the lab. But even so, they were still dear friends. I'd never tried hypnotherapy before. It was interesting. I never thought it would work on me, so that was a big surprise. It worked? Perfectly. Huh. I bet Luca Nyan wouldn't last a second. Aw, oh, come on. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sure. Luca would believe anything you told him. Anyway, there's no point in standing around forever. I was getting hungry, and it was time to find some place to eat. Hey guys, what do you want to eat? My treat. We decided to head toward Yodobashi. There were a lot of restaurants there, so it was perfect. Way to go, Kioma! 
I mean, Okari. You're the best, Nia. Thank you. <laughs> what should I eat? Maybe fried chicken? Juicy fried chicken? That's all Mayushi ever eats, Nya. I walked behind the three of them. And I thought to myself, what would it be like if Kuditz was here? I'd tried my hardest for the past few months not to think about her, but... Was it because of my experience today that I did anyway? The expressions and little mannerisms I'd seen yesterday. The voice. The way she'd walked. I remembered. I remembered my conversation with her. Hello, Rintaro Okabe. I'm Kuritz Makase. Nice to meet you. <laughs> I couldn't respond at all. Something felt slightly off about the way Kuritz moved on the screen. But it was really slight. I'd get used to it soon. More importantly, the voice and the way she spoke were exactly like the real Kuditz. I almost cried. And it was all I could do to stop from breaking down. Um, Maho, it's not the middle of the night, is it? The camera on the PC switched from me to Maho. No, it isn't. Why? I was wondering if the two of you were sleepy. Was she talking about the fact that I didn't respond to her introduction? I was asleep until just a bit ago, but now I'm 100% awake. I see you're as lazy as ever, huh? Don't be rude. Anyway, can I ask a question? Sure. What's up? What's your relationship to Okabe Rintado here? <laughs> He's a student who participated in the last ATF seminar. He seemed really interested in the research, so I brought him here. Maho decided not to tell Amadeus that I was a friend of Kuritz before she died. Why, I wonder. Did she not want Amadeus to find out? Maybe to see if something would happen, like... You know, like, maybe if the memories can, like, somehow... I mean, it wouldn't make sense, right? Because they're just data that was stored. So it's not like it can, like, grow or, like, recall something. But besides, we're, we knew her after the fact, so... But maybe she's trying to see if, like, she'll recognize or something? I don't know. Or was I supposed to tell her myself? Huh. He must be pretty impressive, if you're saying that. The... The kuritz on the screen turned to me and smiled. Um... Uh... Calm down. So, Okabe, what's your major? Brain science, I assume? It... it it's... The words got stuck in my throat. I said calm down! You know this is just a program. Her words, her appearance, even the conversation she's having with you right now, they're all artificial. But even though I knew that, I still couldn't speak. I had no idea what to say. And more than that, the words nice to meet you hit me harder than I thought they would. This wasn't the Kuritz I'd spent those three weeks with. Maho had told me this ahead of time, and I thought I understood it. But hearing it for myself hurt more than I imagined. I regretted not taking my anxiety meds, but it was too late now. My heart rate soared and my breathing became irregular. 
My head was spinning, and the corners of my vision were beginning to dim. At some point, my lips had gone totally dry. Is something wrong, Okabe? Kuditz sounded worried. That voice software must be pretty good, if it could handle nuances like that. His major isn't brain science. But he's very interested in our research. Is he? Dr. Leskinen likes him too. At some point, I plan to make him my assistant. What? My head snapped up in surprise at Maho's bizarre statement. Interesting. Me? Maho's assistant? Then I'd go to Victor Chondria University? Oh? You don't like the idea? It's not whether I like it or not. Well, it was a joke anyway. A joke? Did you take it seriously? I did not. <laughs> I was going to tell her that I almost did. I see. But if you study real hard, it might not be a joke after all. Even if it wasn't, I'd rather be Dr. Leskinen's assistant. This was my way of getting back at her. It's harder to be his assistant than you might think. He's really a big kid. As she spoke, she quietly came over next to me and tapped me on the arm a few times. I see. So that was it. She was making a joke to try and calm me down. S sorry Thanks. What are you talking about? I didn't think subtlety was her thing. Maybe I was wrong? Um, Maho, excuse me. Cut its beck into Maho from within the screen in a very human manner. Hmm? What is it? Come a little closer, toward the speaker. Ma'am? Yeah? Maho moved her ear close to the speaker. I was just thinking about how weird it was when... H huh? Maho suddenly turned bright red and shouted at the screen. Of course not! What are you talking about? You don't need to be so embarrassed. I'm not embarrassed! Just stop being weird. You're sure? I'm sure. Um, what are you talking about? <laughs> it was obvious that Kuditz had whispered something to Maho. Yeah, how does it whisper? That's interesting. What did she say? Maho glanced at me. <laughs> and for some reason, she blushed and turned away. Yeah, <laughs> Kuditz is trying to set us up. Amadeus Kuditz. <laughs> dude, that hurts, dude. Are they gonna try to make us like Maho in this? Because, like, ah, oh, man. Ah. Oh. It would make sense, though, because future Okabe wouldn't have Kuditz around. And he would be relying on... On, on his, you know, past self to fix everything when he sends the video eventually, so... Oh man, this is gonna get sad, isn't it? She's gonna end up liking us and we're gonna be like, I'm sorry, but I love Kuditz too much. And, and we're gonna break her heart or something. Ah, oh, it's gonna suck. Ah, I see. From the way Maho was acting, and what I knew about Kuditz, there was only one possibility. He's gonna get it wrong. Freaking mainstream women. <laughs> nope, you did get it right. <laughs> I whispered a name I'd often teased Kuditz with, and suddenly felt a lot better. 
She must have said something stupid like, You two make a good couple, or you finally found a man, huh? The way she looked at a boy and girl holding a friendly conversation and immediately assumed they were dating was just like the kudits I knew. Sheesh. What a system. <laughs> it didn't need to be that true to her personality, did it? I chuckled. Do you think this Kuditz also browses at channel when Maho and the professor aren't looking too? Nah. Knowing her, she's probably commenting. <laughs> I remember Kuditz once browsed at channel on the Future Gadget Laboratory's computer when she knew nobody else was around. Oh. H hey! Knock before you come in! Christina, what are you doing when you should be working? Hey, stay back! <laughs> <laughs> hey, what's with that, oh, this is terrible, right, right, Raffle? Kinda laugh. <laughs> Fret not, Christina. Or should I say... At Channeler Kuritz. Don't call me that. I knew it already. Indeed, I'd known it for a long time. You reek of At Channeler. How rude! My perfume isn't that strong. <laughs> That's not what I'm talking about at all. I'm talking about your soul's power level. But it's cute how you try to hide it at Channeler Kuditz. Do. Not. Call. Me. That. <laughs> Your soul's power level, huh? My silly remarks seem to have a much deeper meaning now. Was the girl in front of me one day going to, as Dr. Leskinen had said, Become a real artificial soul? When that happens, what are we supposed to call a soul that still existed in this world after the body was gone? Not dead or alive, but something in between. This wasn't science anymore. It was philosophy. Or maybe religion. Enough messing around. Okabe didn't come here to waste his time with this stuff. The way you're trying to change the subject makes me even more suspicious. I'm going to infect you with a virus. <laughs> I was kidding. I won't bring it up again. Kuritz quickly bowed her head. <laughs> I bet back when Kuritz was still alive... She had conversations like this with Maho every day. I'm sure Dr. Leskinen had a lot of fun watching them. It was actually kind of cute. Sorry about that, Okabe. Want to try talking to her? Uh, oh. Maho offered me the seat in front of the PC. Kuditz's face was on the monitor right in front of me. When her eyes met, she smiled a little. I didn't know she reacted like this to people when she first met them. But my meeting with Kuditz went about as badly as it possibly could have. I realized that her prickly attitude towards me could have been unusual for her. <laughs> Ask me whatever you want. I'll answer anything I can. Hmm. Yeah. This wasn't good. I was remembering every moment I'd spent with Kuditz. I couldn't think of what to say. And then the words that came out of my mouth were... Is it possible to create a time machine? Oh! <gasps> yeah, that's how he's gonna do it! He's gonna use... Oh, that makes so much sense! Yeah, because it's only like a couple weeks before, right? Like, this would be basically, like, a month and a half or something, two months maybe, before she came to Japan. She's not gonna be, like, any less smart, probably, right? Yo, this is how we're gonna be able to make the time machine to go back and save her. Oh, this is so cool. 
That was what I'd once argued about with Kuditz on another world line. In the end, I'd lost the argument completely. What? Huh? A time machine, you said? Where did this come from? It, it's just a test. I, I wanted to see if she was capable of thought experiments. Hmm? Well, could it? Let me see. My conclusion is that it's not possible. But we don't know for sure if it's impossible, I guess. What? That wasn't what she said. Yeah, she got interesting. I'll begin with my conclusion. The very idea of a time machine is idiotic. Right, but see, we don't know what was in... Well, okay, but we do know that she made a paper to give to Nakabachi. That much we figured out after killing her. And then going back, which is where this picks up, you know, picks up at. So, he should know that she had some kind of interest, right? Or knew? Huh. That's what Kuditz had said in the Alpha World line. I remembered that well. I think the very idea of a time machine is idiotic. I remembered our old debate and decided to repeat what Kuditsu had said then. It's too early to assume that. You think so? It's true that scientists all around the world have proposed time travel theories. There are 11 major ones, and countless minor ones, but none of them are anything more than hypotheses, and some of them directly contradict one another. Correct. For example, there's a cosmic string theory, and a wormhole theory, where time travel is possible as a thought experiment, but... No one has a clue where you would go to get cosmic strings or exotic matter. In other words, it's not realistic. This was also something that Kuditz had told me in the Alpha World line. But the Kuditz on the screen was unmoved. That's probably because scientists haven't discovered something important yet. Then you think it's possible to create a time machine. We don't know for sure that it's impossible. That's what I said, remember? Uh, yeah, her opinion was slightly different. Was this because I was in the beta world line? Or perhaps... Hey, Hiyajo. She knows she's made from a copy of the original's memories, right? Of course. Then, um, I can't think of a good example, but is it like identical twins? You can't tell them apart at birth, but as they grow, differences start to form? Or something like that? We're still investigating that, but if the memories they build up are different, I think that of course they'd become something different from the original human. The professor agrees with me. I see. It was then that I heard the door on the other side of the partition slam shut. Hmm? Is that the professor? From the loud sound of the footsteps, I'd assume so. I could definitely hear somebody stomping around outside. And then after a heavy knock, the door to the booth flung open. Oh, I still don't trust you. Lintalo? L Lintalo? The professor opened his arms wide as he came inside. He grabbed my hand and began to wave it around. I hadn't realized he was this friendly. He seemed to think he was giving me a handshake, but it felt like I was being worked over by a pro wrestler. Yeah, he's too nice. He's too nice. I, I, I just, I don't trust him. 
Hey, boy. What's up? Huh? Uh, um... I'm fine. Thanks. And you? Okabe, your English is terrible. Sh shut up, Christina! Christina? <laughs> oh no. I was so focused on the professor that I used my old nickname for her. It's nothing. Don't worry about it. I am worried about it. Why am I Christina? <laughs> I told you, it's nothing. You're freaking out a lot over nothing. I said shut up, Christi- Cut it. Kuritz and Maho both seemed lost in thought. You called her Christina, huh? You too! Just drop it! <laughs> I didn't want any more questions about this. Since the professor was here, I decided to ask more about how Amadeus' memories worked. Um, professor... Is it possible for Amadeus' memories to be externally modified? But the professor wasn't listening to my question. He seemed to be frantically searching his pockets for something. Come to think of it, I didn't see that translator device on his ear. Oh. He must have been looking for it, which meant odds were good he didn't even hear my question. Modifying my memories? It's theoretically possible. Kuditz herself answered in the professor's place. For example, it would be possible to make me think that my name was Christina. But memory data isn't like normal data. It's much more complex. I'm aware of no successful attempts to modify it. And even if the attempt succeeded, I would notice it and repair myself. I keep logs in an area that only I can access. That's kind of dangerous. In other words, a secret diary. If there was a discrepancy between my current memories and my diary, there's a very high probability I'd become suspicious. What's more, my memories are backed up at regular intervals. Even if they were altered beyond the point where I could self-repair, I would still be able to restore them. I would lose any memories that had formed between then and the last backup, though. Well, that's gonna come into play, okay. Hmm. Huh. I see. Regardless of the topic of discussion, it felt strange. What Maho had said before she loaded Kuditz was true. I was starting to feel like I was chatting with the real Kuditz. The way she wouldn't let you get a word in edgewise once she started talking about science was exactly like the real Kuditz. It's interesting, though. I turned towards Kuditz and spoke. You're able to consider yourself objectively, as a machine. From what I see in books and comics, I'd expect you to say, I'm not a machine, I'm human. That's pure nonsense. Even humans speak of themselves as a combination of hardware and software, right? They just call it biology and psychology. What's the difference? I see. Yeah, good point. She's better with comebacks than anyone I know, isn't she? <laughs> When she heard this, Kuditz turned toward Maho, her CG eyes big and round, though it was really just the camera sensor moving. You know, Maho, this may not be any of my business, but you should watch what you say. You finally got your chance. What if he stops liking you? <laughs> <laughs> oh no! What? Come on, don't bring that up again! 
but it's what I find most interesting right now. <laughs> it's what I find most meaningless right now. What if this is the last chance you'll ever get? You're the one who needs to learn to watch what you say. <laughs> Dr. Luskinen was clapping his hands together and laughing. I had to chuckle a little too. Afterward, the three of us, including the professor, talked to Kuditz, discussing technical subjects and making small talk. The next thing I knew, it had been almost an hour. I actually felt a little sad when Maho told me that it was time to stop. In just a single hour, the strangeness I'd felt about Amadeus had disappeared, and I felt like I was really talking to Kuditz. Dr. Leskinen stopped me before I left. So, interested in being a tester? I tilted my head when I heard the professor speak through the translator. Amadeus doesn't have a lot of conversation samples. I've got all the kids in my lab helping as much as they can, but it's not enough. Amadeus is still in the research stage, and we can't just let anyone talk to it. So I want you, Lintalo, to help us, since you were her friend. I remembered they'd mentioned something about being a tester at the party. So this is what they were talking about. The professor and I will be staying in Japan for a while. We'd like you to be a tester while we're here. Your job will just be talking to Kuditz. There's no real quota. Just talk to her when you feel like it. But twice a month, I want you to report on your testing to me and the professor. Oh, and I'm sorry, but we can't pay you. I want you to keep that in mind when you decide. <laughs> I... I'm aware that it's cruel to ask you to talk to an AI that's perfectly identical to your dead friend. If you're not interested, feel free to turn us down. I remembered what it had felt like to talk to Kuditz when the monitor was just about to turn off. This is what Kuditz had said. Let's talk again sometime, Rintaro Okabe. That's what I'd hoped for when I came here, wasn't it? I'll do it. Please let me do it. I thought I was ready when I accepted the job. But I had never expected this. Oh. Oh! Hello? It's Makase. Kuritz was displayed on the screen. Yes, it was Amadeus. The app the professor had given me allowed me to access the servers at Victor Chondria University from anywhere, 24 hours a day. Oh, that way we can talk to her. Okay, so we don't have to be there. Of course, you'll be able to contact Kuritsu. But Kuritz will also sometimes contact you. When that happens, talk to her. Interesting. This I hadn't predicted. I'd never thought she would call me. Or that her face would be displayed on the screen. Or should I have introduced myself with It's Christina? She looked really mad. I could guess why. I had gotten eight calls from Kuditz, and I had ignored them all. Really? Oh, wow. 
Maho and Dr. Leskinen explained things, so I thought I'd call once myself to make a proper introduction, but... I didn't expect you to refuse to pick up eight times. <laughs> Why aren't you saying anything? Talking to a realistic girl on my smartphone with so many people around was pretty embarrassing. Well, if you don't want to talk, that's fine, but... What's with you? I was sure this was my chance to talk more than usual. I feel like an idiot. <clears throat> Just know that during the test period, I'm always connected with you. Contact me whenever you feel like it. I'm busy, so I don't know if I'll always be able to answer your calls. Man, what is this? More than that strangely polite, friendly kudits from yesterday. Angry. Stubborn. More curious than anyone. The way she seemed to be constantly challenging you. Anyway, goodbye. I realized that this really was Kudits Makase. That was the girl I'd spent those three weeks with. Lab member 004. My assistant, Christina, aka Kudits Makase. Her movements were a little more jerky than I'd seen on the computer in Dr. Leskinen's office, but evidently that was because of the smartphone. I... This alone was enough to make me feel like my heart was being squeezed dry. I stood still, holding the smartphone tight. Kiyoma! I mean, Okarin! What's wrong, Nya? Oh, I'm coming. I thought to myself as I ran to catch up with the others. Maybe Dr. Leskinen was right, and this test would be a very cruel thing for me. But even so, in my mind I was already starting to think about what I would talk about with Kuritz. <laughs>